welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. This video is actually video number two of my crochet basic series. In video number one, I showed you what materials you needed to begin crocheting, how to prepare those materials, what to do with your hands, and how to make a chain. If you'd like to refer to that video before watching this video, I highly recommend you do so. There's a link right here at the top of the screen. I will also include a link in the notes section and the comment section below. So all you have to do is click on that link to watch the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get onto row one, how to do the single crochet stitch, how to do the slip stitch, and how to end your work. Are you ready? Let's go. To begin this tutorial, I'm going to have you already having a slip stitch on your crochet hook. If you're not sure how to make a slip stitch to put on your crochet hook, refer to video number one where I show you a couple different techniques on how to do this process. We will begin by chaining 11 chains. Also, learning how to chain video one if you're not sure how to do that. One, two, three, four, 11. Perfect. Remember that the loop on your crochet hook does not count as a stitch. We will only refer to these V shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, Great. Let's move on to row one. For row one, we will skip the very first chain and move over to the second chain. This is where some people will differ, so I'm gonna show you a couple different techniques on how to make a single crochet stitch, and I'm gonna let you pick which one you like the best. When you look at the chain, you will see three different yarns. The top, the middle, and the bottom. Some people will insert their crochet hook into the chain just under the top yarn. Then they will yarn over, pull that yarn through the chain, leaving you with two loops on your crochet hook, yarn over and pull that yarn through both the loops. And that is a single crochet stitch. Technique number two will be inserting your crochet hook right above the bottom yarn, leaving two yarns on the top, one yarn on the bottom. So two, one, and then yarning over, pulling through that chain, yarning over, pulling through for a single crochet stitch. The third technique I've seen people use off of their foundation row is to actually turn the foundation row where you see the V stitches, turn it over. So you're looking at the side that looks like chain links. Insert your crochet hook under the middle yarn, having one yarn on the top, two yarns on the bottom, and then yarning over, pulling through the chain, yarning over, pulling through both loops for a single crochet stitch. So those are three different ways that you can make a single crochet stitch off of the foundation row. So I'm going to have you pick. Which one did you like the best? Try all three, see which one you like the most. Do you like making your single crochet off of the foundation row by inserting your crochet hook? just under the top loop. How about underneath two loops on the top, one loop on the bottom, or turning your foundation over so you see the chain links, and inserting your crochet hook underneath just the middle yarn. Personally, my favorite way to single crochet off of the foundation row is inserting my crochet hook with two yarns on the top and one yarn on the bottom but that's just my personal preference. Yarn over, pull through both loops. I would like you to practice making one single crochet in each one of these chains all the way across to the very last chain here. See what technique you like the most. I will meet you at the very end last chain here to show you the next step. last chain here, making my very last single crochet stitch, and then I'm going to pause for a second. Looking at the single crochet stitches on my foundation row, if you look at it straight on, it'll look like this. If you turn 
the stitches so you're looking at the top of them you will see that there's a bunch of V stitches here so it's in a way a chain on top of a chain we recognize these V stitches this will also help us to count our stitches by counting the number of V's that we can see one two three four five six seven eight nine 10. Remember the loop does not count as a stitch. Now, why do we only have 10 stitches when we chained 11 stitches for our foundation row? The reason why is that 11th stitch we skipped in order to get us to row one. The 11th stitch was known as our turning chain. You always need to have some kind of stitch help you to get to the next row. Depending on what that next stitch will be, will determine how many chains you will need to help you turn onto that next row. So it is called our turning chain. And that is what we're going to do right now. We just single crocheted in our very last stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull the yarn through our loop, creating a chain. This is our turning chain. When we are making single crochets, we only need one turning chain to get us to the next row. Once we've made our one turning chain, we can turn our work. Some people have personal preference. I literally will just flip my work this way. Some people teach you that you need to turn it like a book, so like a page in a book, and then start working. I'll leave it up to you on how you want to turn your work. That way, our crochet hook is facing towards the work. We want our crochet hook facing towards the work so we can start working in the stitches. Looking at the stitches, where do I put my crochet hook? Looking at your work straight on, you will see a hole right there, hole right there, hole right there. That is where we are going to put our crochet hook. If you look at the top of the work where you see the V stitches, this is where we refer to the front loop and the back loop. The front loop will be the yarn that is closest to you the back loop will be the yarn that is further away from you. We will not focus on that right at this moment. What I want you to focus on is not looking at the top of your stitches, but rather look at the side of your stitches. Insert your crochet hook into the very first hole underneath both loops. So you'll see your V stitch on top, the front loop and the back loop I was talking about. You want both loops on top of your crochet hook. You will yarn over, pull through that stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet. Each hole is referred to as a stitch because this was a single crochet stitch. I'm inserting my crochet hook into that single crochet stitch that was made previously yarning over, pulling the yarn through, yarn over, pull yarn through both loops, creating a brand new single crochet stitch. Again, entering my crochet hook into the next single crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. With this regular single crochet stitch, we are making sure we are going underneath both loops to complete the stitch. Go ahead and continue making one single crochet stitch all the way across. When we get to the very last single crochet stitch, I'll show you what to do next. Last single crochet stitch here, inserting my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Again, to get onto the next row, you chain one, turn your work, and continue. Very first hole right here, the side of your stitches, is going to be your first single crochet space. To make sure that you are staying on track and that you are not accidentally adding an additional stitch somewhere in here, or missing a stitch and having less stitches in your row, which will create caving in in certain areas, you will want to make sure that you count the number of stitches are in a row. We are creating rows right now. You can count the number of stitches in a row a couple different ways. Either one as you are crocheting, so one, two, three, four, or you could just count the V's on the top of your work. So looking at the top of your stitches here, one, two, three, 
four. Either way, counting the number of stitches in each row will help to make sure you're staying on track. All right, now let's move on to show you how to make a slip stitch. To make a slip stitch, we will insert our crochet hook into the side of the stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch, but then continue and pull that same yarn through the loop on your crochet hook, leaving yourself with one loop still on your crochet hook. That is known as a slip stitch. Let's do that again. Next stitch, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through that stitch, leaving you with two loops on your crochet hook. But instead of yarning over like we did with the single crochet, we're just gonna take that first loop and pull it through the second loop. And that is a slip stitch. Perfect, last stitch here. You will definitely wanna make sure that you watch how tight your tension is here because you want a looser tension so you can go back and work inside that stitch. If your tension is too tight, you will find it difficult to go back and work these stitches. We will chain one, turn our work, and we can continue on. Slip stitch, side of the work, finding that hole. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch, and continue pulling that yarn through the loop on your crochet hook. Perfect. And that is the slip stitch. I highly encourage you to practice the slip stitch and practice the single crochet stitch just so you can get a hang of these two brand new stitches. All right, I'm gonna finish this row and then I will show you how to end your project. Last stitch here, so I'll make a single crochet. So let's just say that I have finished my project. I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna cut yarn long enough for me to insert this yarn into a yarn needle or tapestry needle and weave in my ends. But before we approach the yarn needle, we need to tie off our project so that way it doesn't just fall apart. Crochet hook is still in the loop. We're going to yarn over this little tail, pull that yarn, through the loop on our crochet hook. Pull that yarn tight. That creates a knot. Taking our yarn needle or tapestry needle, thread the needle with the yarn. And now you are ready to weave in your ends. Cleaning up the project and finishing everything off. I have multiple different techniques on how to weave in your ends or even join yarn if you are working a project and as you are crocheting, you run out of yarn and need to attach more yarn to keep going. This video is perfect for that. Weaving in ends and joining yarn. I'm gonna put a link right here at the top of the screen if you'd like to check that out tons of different ways to do this. Find the technique that works best for you. And now you know how to move on to the next row, slip stitch, single crochet stitch, and how to end your project. So what did you think of the single crochet stitch? I know that it's basic, but with that basic single crochet stitch, you can make so many things. You can make a washcloth, a pot holder, you can make a blanket, you can make a belt, you can make a scarf, you can make a bag, a purse. There's so many things that you can make with just the single crochet stitch. So now the world is yours. Feel free to just release your creative brain and start making things. If you'd like some more ideas on different things that you can crochet, check out my videos. Also, I highly recommend that you check out my crochet basics playlist. I'll put a link right here at the top of the screen for you. In the crochet basics playlist, I show other basic stitches and techniques that I think are really helpful for any beginner crocheter or even any intermediate crocheter that is just trying to check out or level up. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.